Welcome to tonight's show, you're with Tom Brown and Steve, and this is NRL from the sidelines, and as we do it every time this week, we're going to go through the NRL that's just been played, but Tom, it's only one game to talk about tonight. Correct. And as you'll notice, we don't have our friend Brian, but you know what I do have? What's that? Brian behind you. Oh, okay. Yeah, I can see the picture in, there. In, in his glory. beautiful... In his glory, glory. In his glory, glory. <laughs> and I know he would appreciate me putting this up. Because he would I just like to be included. That's right. Yeah. And, and I don't have anything, other photos of him. So this is the only one I've got. So yeah, fair enough. I, I, I think it's a great Sounds photo fair. of him. He'll yeah. love it. Glad he's wearing it, not me. Considering the way he's bagged you out the last few times when you've been away. Yep. Absolutely. Ch- chance to get him back. Sure. Tom... Panthers win the grand final. Twenty-eight to twenty. Twelve. And uh, yes, look, the Eels <clears throat> put on a couple of late tries when I think the Panthers had switched off, probably. Um, um, but it was just an incredibly dominant performance by the Panthers. Um, unlike last week when um, they were rusty after having a couple of weeks off um, and took a half to get themselves mm. organised. Um, this week they were on from virtually the first first moment. Um, it was tough, relentless, and um, so where did it go wrong for Parramatta? I just think they couldn't match. They couldn't match the intensity of the of, of the, the Panthers. They couldn't get out of their end half the time. Yeah, I got to say, look, look. There's no doubt Penrith are always going to win this game. Okay, I'm not disputing that whatsoever but I actually thought in the first half there were a few 50-50 calls that could have gone either way and the Panthers seemed to get their fair share of luck thought Moses Leota he was being credited on the on the TV as how tough he was but I thought he had a couple of swinging arms there that should have been penalised yeah um both teams were allowed to lay all over each other yeah um and then of course there was Jerome Luai um, I still, to this moment, we were sitting together. Yep. We saw him kick whoever it was down on the ground. Yes. And not one person has commented about it. I cannot believe well, it. Well, it. it actually has. It was in today's paper. Was it? It was I in today's, today's paper, paper, and there has been some social media about it. Yep. But you're right. None of the officials said anything. None of the officials after the game said anything. None of the reporters or the commentators on the game said anything. And I couldn't believe Because you and I saw it straight yep. away. Yep. We, I mean... I don't know yeah. if they're not watching the same vision that they've got on TV, but I can tell you it was as clear as day. Well, he got it. He got it a little, a, a bit of a gentle shove in the back from one of the other players. He didn't. He took exception to it. Tried to yeah. push him back again, and then that guy obviously got tackled. And he's just well, he didn't sink the boot in, but he actually no. he used a kicking motion on him, which you know is illegal. And yes. at the very least, he should have got ten in the bin yes. and be put on report. Um, so you know. People sometimes wonder why certain clubs get preferential treatment or are seen to be getting preferential treatment at certain times. And, you know, that's one of those instances where the match review committee had ample opportunities. Oh, yeah. That would have been told a number of times. Did you see yeah. that kick? Yeah. Not, nothing. Well, but interestingly enough, even the TV came, TV never went back to show the no, replay. which they, I kept waiting missed. for that. Look, having said all of that, um, I think Luai... Um, doesn't doesn't um, cover himself with with uh, with grace very much with some of his antics, but they were relentless. Said the Panthers, um, they didn't have a bad player on the ground. I thought no. um, Dylan Ed Dylan Edwards was deserving, well deserving of the Clive Churchill Medal. Um, There's been also reports today about the fact that when he was announced as the Clive Churchill, nobody he, they hear. Yeah. yeah, no one cheered him, no one clapped him, no one patted yeah. him on the back, and yet last year when Cleary won yep. it. Yeah, they were all over him. So you so, wonder what's going on there because you know they say he wouldn't trade him for anything, and uh, he's incredibly humble. Maybe yeah. maybe too humble sometimes, and uh, maybe just doesn't um, fit. Maybe just doesn't fit in with that that I, layer there's, there's culture. There's a clique, I think, within oh, yeah. the club that yeah. that is, is is he's probably not yeah. fitting into. Yep, yeah. because you're right, he's not a layer. But yeah. you know what, Penrith were exceptional. Oh yeah, they they yeah. what they did in that first half, yeah. nobody was going to stop them. No, There's no, it was club around who could have stopped it. that. Um, that little grubber in for Sorensen um, was just yep. an act of genius. You know, yep. just it just such vision um, for Cleary to be able to put well, that he, little. He little did the same thing kicking. last week with South when Mitchell was in the line, and Edwards got it, and Edwards yeah. got it. So yeah, yeah I mean, it, it's it. 
And at eighteen nil, I, I honestly thought the game was over oh, um, at half time. You know, I mean, theoretically the Eels won the half, the second half, twelve ten. But I think by then, the Panthers have clocked off. Yeah. Um, okay. So, so a lot of people are saying that Penrith now need to consider themselves one of the great teams of all time. They're comparing them with the the Raiders of the eighties. Um, you know, the the Broncos of the late nineties, early two thousands. Um, can we really put them? I mean, the Raiders team had you know, <coughs> Belcher, <coughs> Daly, Meninga, those players. Yeah. Can we really put them in in that league? Well, there's two ways to look there? at it. You could say they have a number of very good players and a couple of superstars. Yep. Um, you could you could argue that okay, they're a great team because they don't they're not chock full of superstars. Um, or you could say. The Broncos are looked back on now as a, as a, as a great team. Same yeah. with the Raiders. Maybe they need to earn a little bit more. I mean, you know, the way it's looking, Panthers could win the next two premierships the way well, they Well, they won, what, honestly. five over the weekend. Yeah. So. But I think, I personally believe that um, they are an amazing team, uh, but I think they've yet to prove themselves as a great team of the ages. Well, Jack Gibson always said... A, a, a champion team will always be the, the team, team of champions. champions. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And look, they've been in the last three grand finals. They've won yep. two of them. So, yep. yeah. but you look at the Storm and you look at the Roosters over the last ten years. They've had sustained success. Yes. Um, this could be the start of that sustained success for Penrith. So I'm not 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 discounting that. They are playing incredibly at the moment. They lost four games this year. Yeah. Um, so that could be the start of that dynasty. But I would like to see how they perform next year. There's yep. going to be a lot of tossing around of players um, at their club and other clubs next year. Um, let's see what next year brings. They three-peat, then I'm happy to <laughs> put my hand up and tell them. Is the Parramatta window closed, premiership window? You'd have to think so, really. Well, um, they're losing some substantial players for next year. Yeah, Reed Marnie's going to be a big loss. And, yeah. um, and Papali, uh, Isaiah Papali, I think, is also a huge yes. loss. Depends on who they've got waiting in the wings, but you know they weren't even they weren't close. I really thought that Parramatta could have um, caused an upset um, this weekend, but they weren't even close. Yeah. Um, so for Penrith, obviously the year was success. For Parramatta, successful. <coughs> I would say South was successful. Would you say the Roosters had a successful year? No, because I think they had a poor start. And um, they came good at the end. Um, they needed to beat the Rabbitohs. It was a game that was a mess. And um, like we said before, Rabbitohs took their chances. Roosters didn't. They didn't deserve to win. Um, I actually think, though, had we had had we got over the Rabbitohs, I actually think we might have got to the prelim. And I think we might have caused a bit of trouble in the prelim. May not have beaten them, but I actually think that um, they were building. That's why it was so uncharacteristic of the Roosters to lose the way they did. Um, but anyway, um, look, I, I, the, they're already installed as $4, $4 yeah. favourites, the, yeah. the Panthers already. Yeah. Um, and, yeah, and our friend Bradley Jurd had a photo of himself saying back-to-back and now it's time for back-to-back-to-back. <laughs> Which is what you did when the Roosters it is, won it. It yeah, is, so. yes, that's right. Um, yeah. Sharks have a successful year? I think, according to the coach, they didn't. Um, <clears throat> I think he did an incredible job with the, with the Sharks. Yeah. Um, I think they disappointed themselves in the end. I mean, the Rabbitohs were playing some good f- football at that stage. Yep. Um, but I actually think that they would look back with some disappointment at the way they handled that game. Um, I think they are probably overawed. I think the Rabbitohs are, are used to finals football. Yeah. I think the Sharks hadn't been in for a few years. Well, most of those players had never played played at that 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 week of the finals, um, and I think it just got the better of them. I think in the end. And the last one, Cowboys. Cowboys, massively overachieved. I think um, it will remain to be seen what they do next year. I think if they can um, start the season the same way they ended it. Um, you know, leading up to the last game, yep. then I think that you'll seriously think that they've turned things around. Um, you know, going from what was a bottom four last season to to third um, is a pretty mighty performance. Yeah. Um, All right, let's have a chat. I want to talk about the World Cup squad yep. that's been picked. Yep. Um, 
most of them are what you'd expect. Mm -hmm. um, there's been a debate over Edwards and Tedesco, but there's no way that Tedesco would ever be taken out of that team. No. Um, how do you feel about Harry Grant instead of either Coruscant or Cook? Yeah, look, I would have gone for Abby myself. Grant Grant has proven himself a, a great, a, a, a terrific player, but he's been around for five minutes, you yeah. know, and um, and I I think in combination with Brandon Smith, he played very well for the Storm. Yeah. Um, personally, though, I thought Appy has been the proven performer this season. Mm, I agree, and I actually think that he deserved. Um, deserve to get there. Interesting enough, he's not even one of the standby ones. Cook's no. the standby one. Yeah. And yeah. I think I think has had a much better Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Yeah. And I feel sorry for Cook because he's been the incumbent for a while now and he just hasn't shown the form or he's been outperformed by the other by the other Well it's interesting because they, they were talking about the incumbents yep. and they're talking about Tedesco, obvious he's an incumbent. Cherry Evans, yep. he got picked because he's the incumbent. Yep. But they weren't prepared to stick with Cook being mm. the incumbent, mm. which is interesting. Well, it's been three years since Australia played. No, that's right. Yeah. So, um, uh, look, I think incumbency probably doesn't mean anything after that that amount of time because anything can happen in your form in three yep. years. I mean, had it been, you know, had it been incumbent from the mid-year test that we used to play, that would be something different. Yeah, look, I, I think, you know, it was an honour for Tedesco to be given the captaincy and you weren't about to reef him away from, you know... I. He's still in the top two or three players in the world. Yeah. Um, and he's... Look, uh, t Tom's, Tom's not even able to be in the conversation, so therefore, Brian, Tom wouldn't be considered anyway. Yeah. But, um, uh, you know, who who do you have better? I mean, I'm sorry, I don't think Luttrell is anywhere near Teddy as a fullback. Oh, he's not um, a fullback. He'll play centre. Um, but, yeah, I, I, look, I feel sorry for Dylan Edwards. I think he, as much as anybody, deserved to be on the plane. Yeah, um, but but where would you play him? That's, well, and I guess he probably wouldn't issue. play unless Tedesco got injured. You know, you keep everybody else where they are. I know we've got a few fullbacks there, but you keep everybody in their place. And if Teddy goes down, you bring Dylan Edwards in. He'd be a perfect foil oh. for him, I reckon. Um, so I feel sorry for the guy because you know both Nico Hines, the Delhi M Player of the Year, and the Clive Churchill medalist don't even get a look in. No, and it's because <clears throat> they're in competition. Okay. You know, for too many other players. Who wins the World Cup? Ooh, I tell you what, I, I think it'll be um, New Zealand or Australia, I think. Yep. I, 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 think, I, think, I think, to me, I think you've got New Zealand and Australia here, and I think you've got England, Samoa and Tonga here. That's, that's my feeling about it. Um, it's, it's Australia's to lose, but man, when you saw those Pacific tests uh, halfway through the season with um, New Zealand, well, absolutely. I mean, you think they've got... Hughes and um, Dylan Brown in the halves, Manu in fullback, Brandon Smith at nine, Fisher Harris, um, and and the Bromwich boys I think um, mm. who are still playing good football. They've got an awesome team. Um, so yeah, they'll give every other team a run for their money. I think. Okay, interesting. Who do you think will win? Um, I, I look. I think Australia will win. I think Australia will win it. Quite easily, to be honest with you. Yeah, it's I'm, about easy. I, I know a lot of people are raving about New Zealand and thinking they're, they're a good chance. Mm. But the one thing about New Zealand is they've always <coughs> had good players in their team but never really been able to perform. Mm. I mean, they, yeah, they, they won it a couple of years ago or, you know, and they've, they've won the occasional test against Australia. But I don't know, I can't, I can't, I can't see Australia losing because we're going to have to play poorly to lose. Yeah, mate, you might be right. I'm not sure. I think, I think this batch of New Zealand players are pretty much all at the top of the game at the moment, um, oh, and that makes no that makes a big difference. Yeah. yeah. Do yeah. you want to talk about the um, NRLW? W, yes. So grand um, final. So the uh, Newcastle Knights played the uh, Parramatta Eels. Knights um, back to back against the Dragons. Um, last week of the last week of the regular season, first week of the finals. It was pretty predictable that they would win. To get through to the grand final, the unexpected one, of course, was the Eels beating the Roosters. Um, the Eels came out all fired up, um, but I think in the end, the Knights just weathered the storm. Uh, I think their defence has been exceptional this season. I mean, the Roosters were lucky to beat them in the, the yeah. last, the, the second last game of the, of the regular season. Um, uh, you know, they bought well. They went from a you know bottom of the 
bottom of the table team. They bought Millie Boyle and uh, Upton. They bought half a dozen players from the Roosters and a couple from a couple from the the um, the Broncos. Um, so they bought really well. Um, do they have a salary cap? No, no, I think they do. But the difference, I think, the difference uh, overall was the seventeen-year-old halfback, yeah. Jesse Southwell. Her her her. Her um, sister came over from the Roosters, did an ACL in the first first week. Um, she was incredible, um, really incredible. Um, I was happy to see the racing McGregor um, from the Roosters got the Gallium women's mm-hmm. player. Um, that was that was uh, well deserved, I thought. Um, and she'll be uh, she'll be fronting up for the for the New Zealand team. Yeah, yeah. I got to say, and I think I said to you last week, I, I'm I'm really disappointed that the team. That wins one game of the preseason, yeah, or one game of the season can make the grand final. I just well, I can't say too much because who just did Roosters that earlier in the year? I, 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 one one game. I look forward one, to two games. next year. We'll have more yeah. ladies teams, and hopefully, we won't have that anomaly. Well, you'd in imagine there. they'd have to play each other at least once. Yeah. Um. So that'll make it a you know eleven twelve team co- a game competition. Um. And uh, look, it'll be interesting to see how all the teams line up because. There's going to be a lot of a lot of toing and froing with clubs. I mean, Jess Sergis won the competition with the Tigers in the lower grade competition. So maybe she's got an allegiance to the Tigers, so she might swap maybe. over to the new franchise. You know, so a yeah. lot of that. Happened. I mean, the Southwells went to the Newcastle Knights because they're from that area. Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, it, it, it'll be interesting to see how the teams shape up next year. Yeah. Okay, just to let you know, the footy tip competition uh, was won by Brighton 75 on 320 points. Well Congratulations. done. Congratulations. Well done. Congratulations, whoever uh, you are. Down to, Tom, you came 10th. Yes. Top 10. I think I think Brian and I battled out for something like 14th or 15th 15th or 16th, spot. I think. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for joining that. That was good fun. And yep. um, we'll do that again on the Facebook page again next year and maybe even do the... Uh, KFC super, super coach, coach thing as well. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're going to call in. Anything you want to say before we go? Um, look, it's been a great season of football. Uh, it's always hard to look forward to now in five months or something of no football. So and that's cricket. Going to be difficult. Who wants to watch cricket? Oh, there's NFL too. Oh, no, there's NFL. Teams in NFL. Yeah, okay. um, but <clears throat> yes, look, um, we look forward to next season. There's always for those of us who didn't win. And about out early. There's always next season, and um, some of us say it earlier than others. <laughs> some of us do, Brian. Brian. <laughs> uh, yes. So look, it's sad to leave the se- the season behind, but um, life moves on, and uh, we will look forward to what happens next year. So on next year, we haven't really decided what we're doing yet. Yep. Um, a third of us are ready to wrap it in, wrap it up. Um, two thirds of us aren't, and we won't say who the third or two thirds are. Um, so we haven't decided whether we'll do this format, um, have nothing at all, or whether we change to a different format. Yeah. Um, so I want to thank everybody for watching this year. I want to. Um, it's been a really good year. We, we our numbers have increased substantially from the year before, yeah. um, and you know it's 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 been fun. It really has, and you know what. Um, if we do it again next year, then hopefully we'll be even better for it. And we appreciate the feedback we got on the Facebook page the other day. That yeah. was really encouraging. Thank yeah. you. Um, although I think Barry put it down as a bit of a joke, to be honest with you. I oh, know, but people people followed up and at least yeah. gave us some realistic I um, think I think it bit Barry on the backside, to be honest. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. So, look, thank you, everyone, for watching. Thank you for all your comments throughout the year. Thank you for um, just being involved and communicating and, you know, sharing your football experiences. We love the game. Mm. And... Um, you know, it's it's something that we just really are passionate about. Mm. And yeah, we get a bit vocal and we, we yell at each other, but we're all good friends. And, yeah. you know, we just enjoy the banter and we hate each other's team. So, hey, yeah. that's the way, that's the way people go. Especially hate Brian's team. Oh, everyone hates Brian's team. They even hold up signs <laughs> saying, you know, about hating Manly. Yeah. Um, thank you all for watching. Um, it's been a great year and we'll hopefully see you again. Maybe, maybe not, but we'll let you know. Either thank way on you. the Facebook page. Either see way, ya. yeah. Keep an eye on the Facebook page. Yeah. Thank you.